We once lived on a planet of the apes, a big old melting pot of primate descendants all vying for a top spot on the food chain. Like a primordial reality show, alliances were formed, romances were had, scores were settled, and in the end, only the homo sapiens survived. But how do we get here and who came before us? Follow the hub as we scale down our family tree to meet some hominids hanging on the lower branches. Let us introduce you to these 10 extinct human species that are still a mystery. If you dust enough dirt off these ancient fossils, you might just discover an unknown truth. And hit the subscribe button to unearth deeper facts about the past that you didn't even know existed. Australopithecus afarensis Digging in a remote part of Ethiopia, Donald Johansson came across something amazing. Surrounded by sediments that are over 3 million years old, the paleoanthropologist dusted the cake mud and rocks off the most complete skeleton discovered up till that point. There was the top of a skull, then a bit of jaw, then portions of the spine. All in all, it was 40% of the female body of a species that would become to known as the Australopithecus afarensis. But as it was in 1974, and Johansson's campsite was playing the Beatles' Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, the team of researchers decided to name their find Lucy. The first Australopithecus was discovered 50 years before, and at the time, its finding heralded a species with an upright posture. It's believed that the adapted ability to walk straight on two legs was the key factor driving human evolution forward. While Lucy might have walked on two legs to have a better balance on unsteady tree branches, she was much smaller than the males in her species, and lived in heavily male-dominated society, similar to that of a modern gorilla. When she was first found, it was thought she was the closest link to a common ancestor between human and chimps, but it's more likely that humans and chimps split on the evolutionary chain around 12 million years ago. So we have a lot more ground to sift through. Denisovans not exactly like any other early human species that we know of, Denisovans stayed isolated for hundreds of thousands of years before mingling with Neanderthals and Cro-Magnons. First classified in 2008, after the remains of a pinky bone and a tooth were discovered lying in a Siberian cave for 40,000 years, the Denisovans were a smaller group that migrated out of Africa and settled in Asia. They eventually died out, but the remnants of their ancestral DNA can still be found in modern Asians. The Melanesians living in Papua New Guinea, for example, owe between 3 to 5% of their DNA to Denisovan heritage. With bigger bones and an early maturity rate, some scientists believe Denisovans may have wandered throughout Asia with complex tools that would give early versions of us a run for our money. Maybe Denisovans had it in them to be as smart, if not smarter, as we ended up being. But they ended up mating with earlier and dumber versions of humanity, and weren't able to evolve into their own advanced beings. Star Children Found in 1930 by a girl in Mexico, the Star Child Skull has confounded experts and spawned conspiracy theories for decades. Is it a brilliant hoax or extraterrestrial evidence? Researcher Lloyd Pye has dedicated much of his life and his works come back with some interesting questions. How is the skull both lighter and harder than the average human skull? How does this specimen, with its elongated head, display the wear and tear of an adult but the overall body size of a child? Where do the unexplained fibers laced within the creature's bones come from? Found with another being just like it, one was buried in the ground while the other lay on its back just above ground. Both had died 900 years ago and yet their bodies fueled alien claims that last to this day. Ardipithecus ramidus. Continuing the tradition of cute nicknames started by Lucy, the skeleton of a 4.4 million year old creature was discovered in 1994. Called Ardi, short for Ardipithecus ramidus, this hominid was found in Ethiopia. In the Ethiopian language known as Afar, the word Rami means root, and Ardi means floor. So this name was meant to emphasize how close to our origins this early ancestor extends. They also lived close to each other. Since the first bones of Ardi were discovered, over 100 Ardithopicus ramidus fossil samples have been uncovered, shedding a little bit of light on their diet, their idiosyncrasies, and their culture. Unlike Lucy, it's believed that Ardi species has a general similarity between males and females, with females reaching an average hobbit height of 3 feet and 11 inches. It's also believed Ardi had the beginnings of an upright walk, and similar to Lucy, she thrived in forest environments. Once upon a time, experts believed that bipedalism started with these creatures creatures moved to grassy, treeless plains as climates dried out. We now know this is probably not the case, as these early humans climbed trees like their distant monkey relatives. Boss Cops 
Unearthed in Boskop, South Africa, the Boskop skeletons have the same air of mystery as the Star Child skull, but are most likely products of our own planet. Living from 30,000 to 10,000 years ago, the Boskop skulls have unusually small faces compared to even modern humans. But maybe it's not their faces that are small. It could be their unusually large heads. While the face of a person from Europe is usually one third the size of their entire cranium, Boskop's face is only one fifth of their skull size. With the skull cavity that big, it could hold a brain mass that's 25% larger than modern humans. But if they were so naturally brilliant, what caused their demise? Perhaps they possessed too much knowledge for their time, and they fell victim to our more murderous ancestors. Maybe they were interbred with other species, and their mental powers dulled with each new generation. Or possibly, their heads were just too large for their mother's birthing canals, causing a high mortality rate, and leading natural selection to prefer babies with smaller heads. What's known is that they were ahead of their time, and that their intelligence was not not the greatest tool available to early humans all those millennia ago. Australopithecus africanus If you put a human and a primate in a blender, you'd most likely end up with the Australopithecus africanus. The first Australopithecus was found in 1924 by Professor Raymond Dart, and it was that family of hominins that experts thought Lucy belonged to when she was first discovered. While they were in the same family, the Africanus boy found in the 20s had more ape-like physical characteristics and more human-like mental traits than Lucy. Known as the Tuang child, the boy had a rounder head and teeth similar to Homo sapiens, but the classic monkey features of the long arms and the pronounced jawline. The mix and match didn't end there, as the Tuang child had a bone structure that allowed it to alter alternate between walking on two feet and climbing through dense greenery. When Professor Raymond Dart unveiled this find, it took two decades for the scientific community to accept the bones as a new relative of humanity. Since then, paleoanthropologists are regularly finding more Australopithecus africanus in the field. Nutcracker Man he may sound like a holiday superhero, but Nutcracker Man is the alter ego of Paranthropus Boise. With wide cheekbones and a massive chomping jaw, Paranthropus Boise was the Pac-Man of the Stone Age. With teeth perfectly equipped for eating hard nuts, paleoanthropologists first thought that this was the chosen food of the early man. But just because we should eat salads doesn't mean we don't binge on fries and milkshakes, and the Nutcracker Man was no different. Analyzing his tooth enamel, researchers were able to construct his diet by looking at the carbon isotopes of foods embedded and fossilized into the teeth. Surprisingly, this test told them that the Nutcracker Man spent more than three quarters of his diet chewing on tough grass. A wheatgrass smoothie might be seen as healthy nowadays, but it's hard to imagine that as being anyone's cheat food. Apparently, the powerful jaw would work just as well at cleaning any gunk off an otherwise tasty blade of grass as it would be for breaking into nuts. The eating preferences of the Paranthropus Boise goes to show that even the smartest scientist can misjudge a subject based on his appearance. Turkana Boy Based on his name, Turkana Boy sounds like Nutcracker Man's sidekick, but he is far from anyone's assistant. Dredged up from the bottom of a sediment in Kenya's dried up Lake Turkana, the fossilized remains of an eight-year-old boy are the most complete skeleton of an ancient human that have ever been found. Stored for over 1.5 million years, the find turned Lake Turkana into a hotbed of exploration and excavation. Here, researchers uncovered examples of bones stretching from a period of 4 million years. Because of the volcanic activity surrounding Turkana, varying amounts of sediments pile up over different time periods, and the rapidly changing climates have allowed for diverse specimens to be stored in the ground, like different flavors in a multi-layer cake. But what makes Turkana Boy stand above the others is just how strikingly modern his walk was. His center of gravity was held up over his pelvis, and he took relatively long steps with arched feet. Able to run distances while carrying objects, he would have grown into an ideal early hunter. Present day apes and our tree climbing ancestors had the perfect structure to throw themselves from tree to tree, but they wouldn't be very good at throwing other objects. Turkana Boy would have been able to throw a spear, and maybe his family was one of the earliest humans to accomplish this feat. Homo Florsiensis while early hominids like the Ardipithecus ramidus may have seemed small in stature, the Homo floresiensis would have been the types of beings Gulliver wrote about in his travels. Ideal for dropping evil rings into Mount Doom, these guys inhabited Indonesia between 95,000 and 17,000 years before we were born. At most, they were a little more than a meter tall, and their brain size paled in comparison to ours. One third of our own cranial size to be precise, yet they were able to fashion small tools and coordinate their efforts to use these tools 
tools and bringing down animals as large as elephants. Scientists aren't yet 100% sure why they lived and thrived for so long with their small size, as well as what ultimately did them in, but they theorized that their tiny stature allowed them to last longer on the limited resources that their island habitat afforded them. This phenomenon, known as island dwarfism, in which less available food in an isolated environment leads to a shrinking species, also happened to the now extinct pygmy elephant found on the same island. Homo neanderthalensis. Neanderthal seems synonymous with the word caveman. And if someone calls another person a Neanderthal in a derogatory way, it's usually a way to make fun of their appearance or their mental capacity. While Neanderthals have their famous eyebrow ridge and large face, they actually are believed to have a gentler spirit that fit their nomadic ways. While they thrived 400,000 years ago, they all but disappeared a little more than 40,000 years ago. This could have been because they didn't get along well with early Homo sapiens, as scientists like to point out that their more aggressive style may have not been compatible with the Neanderthal way of doing business. Still, they could have also had a hard time adapting. Neanderthals were built for taking down animals like the giant woolly mammoths of the Ice Age. They couldn't compete as well once the climate started changing and their prey started dying out. Animals, no matter how smart, start to do funny things when faced with insurmountable obstacles. Many people today have Neanderthal DNA in their blood, and it just goes to show that even in prehistoric times, opposites could attract. Are these 10 extinct human species still a mystery? Or do you think we're on the way to solving exactly who they were, where they went, and what they contributed to early Homo sapiens, who currently walk the Earth? Someday, we'll all know exactly where we came from and how we get to the present. But until then, keep watching The Hub for more questions and answers to our place in history. See you next time!